Hey guys, uh, welcome to Matters of the Heart and Soul podcast. My name is Janie Charlo and welcome to a new episode. And we are talking about chakras today, okay? I will be talking about the seven main energy chakras within your body. You have more than seven, okay? But I will only be talking about the seven main chakras. So if you do your own research and you do some Google about this, you will find these seven main chakras. I wanted to talk about this because these are energy centers within our bodies. And there could be physical issues that you could be dealing with and that it could be a simple fix if you could balance the energy within that chakra or, you know, undo a blockage within that that chakra. Now, I do want to preface that you could be having a physical issue and it's not energy related. So I'm not saying that every physical issue will be fixed by unblocking energies or doing energy work. I'm not saying that. I am saying be open-minded. It could be something that could fix your physical issue. I'm just saying have an open mind, look into the energy centers and see if there's something that could help you out, okay? So I want to go ahead and show you guys a photo here. And as you can see here, these are the seven main chakras, okay? As you can see, they are pretty much aligned through the spine, all right? And as we go forward, you will see how each of these energy wheels all right, these bundles of energy that spin within your body is actually connected to hormones or glands or really important systems, physiological systems within the body, okay? And sometimes if we do the work within these energy centers, we can heal ourselves. We can, we can do the energy work and we can heal ourselves and we can actually get rid of some of the physical issues that we may be experiencing, okay? So I just want you guys to, to know that. And I also want you to understand right here in the center is the heart chakra, okay? So as you can see, going from the bottom up, we have the root chakra. Then we have the sacral chakra, which is the second chakra. The third is the solar plexus. The fourth is the heart chakra. The fifth is the throat chakra. The sixth is the third eye. Some people call it the pineal gland and some people just say the first eye, okay? And then this is the crown chakra, okay? Um, as you can see, there's three below the heart and three above the heart. Your three below are your three chakras that has everything to do with uh, the physical plane, all right, the rootedness in the earth, the physical plane. So these bottom three chakras are everything that roots you to the physical plane. You have to go through the heart chakra to get to these higher three chakras that is everything non-physical, okay? So these are your, your highest chakras, okay? Higher intuition, higher spirituality. And I'm gonna talk about, you know, the heart chakra that's gonna become um, pretty important as we go through this podcast. Okay. So I want you guys to keep that in mind. I'm going to also show you guys a, another uh, photo here. All right. That we're going to work through as well. So as you can see here, um, it's pretty much along the spine. You can see the skull there and we're going to go one on up. Okay. And you see here um, to the right, it talks a little bit about physically where these energy centers are in the body, if it relates to a gland, if it relates to a physical system, all right, that's where related functions, okay? Up here you see glands and you see related functions. Over here, it talks about the main issues, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that, all right? So um, 
I want to go back to the very first photo so you guys can see that. We're going to talk about the root chakra first, okay? The root chakra is the very first chakra. And these energy centers are, are established about every seven years. So the root chakra is actually established between zero and seven years of age, okay? This is the foundational energy chakra. This is established between zero and seven years of age. So let's go back to our, um, our other photo so that you could kind of see what I'm talking about. Okay. So right here, that's the root chakra and that's established between zero and seven years of age. This is everything to do with security and safety. Okay. Between zero and seven years of age, Young children are depending on their parents and their caregivers to provide the security and safety. Most people don't even remember their lives before the age of seven. So if a young child had an issue of being safe or secure or their needs not being met, there could be some unconscious blockages within the roots. And, and that adult may not know. And let me tell you, each energy center has to be open and clear as we move up, okay? And any, any blockage in any one of them is gonna affect the, the flow through all of them. And it'll make sense as we go, okay? So the very root chakra, okay? You can see this is about survival. It's about physical needs, safety and security, tribal association. So this is about your connection to your families. It's about your connection to the earth. It's all of that rooted in there. Physically, this is the lower lumbar area, okay? Okay, uh, this is the adrenal glands, all right? So this is about the fight or flight response, right? So that's kind of a very primitive way of dealing with stress in the environment. You either decide to fight or flee, right? That's when that, that physiological response is, um, is structured in this root chakra, okay? So I just really want to make that clear. This is all about safety and security. This is where if things, if the desires of that child was not met, this is where a lot of fear really, really plants early in life. And let me give you guys an example of what that might look like. So let's say there's a young child age three or four that really wanted a toy. That child really, really wanted a toy. And they asked their caregiver, you know, if they could have a toy. The caregiver um, was frustrated, told the child, no, you can't have that toy. We can't afford it. You know, um, that child only could understand that caregiver's frustration and the fact that they couldn't afford it. So this is where you could see fear of lack or fear of abundance or um, just any of that setting deep in the root chakra. So you have people that grow up in, in lack or you know, fearing that they'll never have enough and they spend their life kind of in that fear. And that's where that type of fear can really be uh, rooted at in the root chakra, all right? And it's little things like that that's very, very, very subtle, that's very much in the blind spots. I like to call it in the, you know, subconscious or unconscious part of our brain that we don't know is there, okay? So that's pretty much from conception to about seven years of age. And honestly, I'll say is even the root is taking place while the baby's in the belly, okay? So that's, that's very important to understand about this chakra. It is also tribal association, you know, um, how you're rooted within your family. If you are adopted, this could be some issues with abandonment. You know, you may not have that tribal association. So people that may have been in foster care or adopted, they may have some root chakra imbalances or blockages. And this is where you want to work through that, okay? And when you work through that, you'll that energy just comes wide open, all right? So um, let's move on 
to our second chakra. All right, I'm going to go ahead and go back to our other photo here. Sacral chakra. All right, this is the second chakra. And this is developed between seven to 14 years of age. The sacral chakra is, I would say, uh, below the belly button. You, you know, it has a lot to do with the emotions, okay? Kind of planting the emotions along with relationships. And I'm going to explain that in a second. So that's the sacral chakra. All right. So let's go back to our other photo so that we could go into more detail right here. All right. It is the sex organs, the adrenal glands. Okay. Lumbar plexus area, still the lumbar area physically, but this is the sex organs and the adrenal glands. This is everything emotional. All right. This is about balance, sexuality, procreation. So physically, if you have issues with fertility, that could be not saying that it is, it could have an issue in this energy chakra, okay? If you have an issue with sexually transmitted diseases, if you have any type of some women fibroids, you know, lots of um, uterine or cervical issues, anything, there could be an imbalance in this energy center, all right? So that's all about sexual function, balance, sexuality, procreation, okay? That's, you definitely wanna, you know, do some work within that chakra. Um, what I want to also say about the sacral chakra is that it's also about relationships. So during the ages of seven to 14, this is a time when young children are establishing those relationships with their parents and siblings and teachers and friends. So and, and we're, we're developing emotional bonds, okay? So you have to be very balanced in this area, okay? A wide open sacral uh, energy field could be, you know, overly sexual. So very promiscuous. You know, this could be issues with sexual identity. This could be where the imbalance here. All right. So that's where you would want to do energy work within that energy center, within the sacral energy. All right. Chakra, that second one. All right, let's go back to our other photo so that we could keep going up here. And what I want you guys to remember, which is very important, is that these each energy, it does develop over time. Like I said, this is between conception and seven years. The sacral is between seven and 14. The solar plexus is going to be between 14 and 21. We'll get into that in a second. But each energy will is very important for all of them. Okay. If there's an imbalance or blockage anywhere within any of these, it's, it's going to be an issue. Okay. And the other important thing to remember, you got to go through the heart chakra to get up to these higher ones. Okay. All right. So let's go to our third which is the solar plexus, okay? And I would say the solar plexus is right below the breastbone and between the breastbone and the, be the belly button. So it's right here in the upper tummy, okay? So that has a lot to do with the abdomen. And we're gonna go back to our other screen and we're gonna talk about that. All right, so right here, Okay, guys, this is your solar plexus. This has everything to do with personal power and self will. You know how you may be telling somebody, pull it from the gut, pull it from the gut. That's that personal power. That's that, you know, self, self will and self worthiness. That is, you know, all about your belief systems and your worthiness in the world. Okay. So, as we could see, digestion. Okay. This has a lot to do with digestion. So, people who have any digestive issues, there could be an issue right here. Um, and again, this is 14 to 21. So, people could have nausea they could have indigestion, they could have anything. Um, and we see it 
because this is also a place where self-confidence is really being developed, especially in teenagers between that uh, 14 to 21 years of age. And they're trying to, um, I guess, decide on where they are in life, gaining that personal power to leave the tribe that's down here and get into their personal power. So you can see that that's within the, the solar plexus. And you can see that's attached to the pancreas, okay? So lots of digestion, lots of digestion. So if you deal with a lot of that, that could be... Um, your issues with being confident within yourself, all right? Just keep that in mind, all right? Let's keep moving up. So the fourth chakra is the heart chakra. That's one of my favorite ones to talk about. Let's go to this other um, picture just really, really quickly so that you guys can see. That's our heart chakra, right dab in the middle. This is so, so important because you have to go through this to get to your higher energy centers, okay? And that's when you tap into the non-physical gifts and energy centers, all right? The heart chakra. So let's go back and talk about that. Um, everything in the heart chakra is about self-love. And as you can see, it has everything to do with your heart. The thymus gland is also very important. Over here, you see electromagnetic field, okay, blood pressure and immune. If you've ever had an EKG done, you know that that is measuring the electroconductivity of the heart. There is lots and lots of energy through your heart center, lots of it, okay? All of these are very important, but this right here is so important. It has a lot of energy flowing through this heart. And this is if you have a heavy heart, if there's an issue with giving and receiving love, if you have a lack in self-love, you're going to suffer right here, okay? So if there's any palpitations, if you have any, you know, um, cardiac arrhythmias, anything like that, you're going to feel it here. And I'll tell you guys, when my heart chakra opened up, I felt so much energy right here. I mean, sometimes I would just hold hold my heart, put my hand on my heart because I felt the energy just rushing there, okay? And I understood what was happening because I was definitely in a place of, you know, divine love and all of that. So you feel this energy through your whole body. And it's so important to open that up because it is connecting you to your higher, your higher chakras. I will tell you, you cannot really tap in fully and clearly into these higher chakras without that heart chakra being open, okay? Um, so you have to work really hard in, in balancing and keeping open these lower chakras that's attached to the physical plane, master these and get up here so that you can tap into these higher chakras, okay? Let's move on. So now the heart chakra is open and the, it's flowing up in here. We are now at the throat chakra, okay? That's the fifth chakra. And this is all about communication. This is about language. You can actually communicate and you can speak your truth and your authentic truth. If you've ever been around someone and you may, you know, try to have a conversation with them and it's kind of like, pulling teeth well, that's because they haven't quite developed their throat chakra. And um, we, we understand that this happens over, you know, seven years. So it's gonna, it's gonna be a little while, um, but it's all about communication, okay? So this has a lot to do with the thyroid gland, all right, the pharyngeal. Some people have uh, thyroid issues, okay? This that may also have acid reflux in this issue right here. So this is about communicating. You know, how are you communicating? This is a very important chakra because it also is about manifesting. You're able to speak the language of the universe through your words so that you can manifest everything. All right. Um, and it's important for us to know that that is developed here through the throat chakra, because if you have somebody that's stuck down here in the root chakra, they don't quite understand that their words, and they could be using their language improperly, 
wanting things to happen, but they're not quite using it properly because this throat chakra is not fully open, okay? So that's very, very important. Um, I was trying to make sure I didn't miss anything out that I wanted to say about the throat. I do want to mention a quote. The voice of someone with an open throat chakra can change the world with words, pitch, and vibration. So someone that's not using their throat chakra, or perhaps their throat chakra is not balanced or too wide open, I would say somebody who is very messy at the mouth. You know, they're constantly running their mouth. They don't know how to basically shut up. They are, you know, talking about everybody. It's just they're running the mouth a whole lot. That's somebody with an unbalanced throat chakra, okay? And it's very important because there is specific language um, that we put out into the universe for that to come back to us. And that's how you can manifest perfectly each time that you want something. So that's important, all right? The throat chakra. And let me just go back really quickly to show you guys the other photos so that you can see right there throat chakra. All right. And this is all about communicating your truth authentically and effectively. All right. Expressing it, expressing it effectively and authentically. That's all about the throat chakra and manifesting through your words because you understand the language of the universe. Very, very important. All right, um, so let's go back now to our other photo. All right, and let's move on up to the sixth chakra, which almost everybody has probably heard about this one. This is what a lot of people call the third eye. Some people uh, like to call it the first eye. And then this is also, some people just call it your pineal gland. You hear that a lot. And as you can see over here, it has everything to do with the pineal gland and the pituitary gland, okay? If this is blocked, you can feel disconnected. You know, you can feel very disconnected to internal wisdom, internal uh, intuition. But when this is open and balanced, this is your sense of intuition. This is your internal sense of God. This is your creative intelligence, okay? And it has everything to do with knowing who you are, the I am. I've, you know, I've probably told people to do I am affirmations. This is where you get that power and that energy from right here in the, the sixth energy chakra. Lots of intuition creative intelligence, all of that right there, all right? Um, you have a, a broader view of who you are. I like to say that because down here, let's say down here in the third chakra where you're supposed to be developing personal power and self-will, if you have not developed personal power and that energy, this energy will or this energy center is blocked, you could be in the victim role, okay? When you're up here and you can't see that, you can't see that you're playing the victim, you know, the woe is me and we're the victim and, you know, all of that. But when you're up here in that, and this energy is open and flowing, you can see clearly the roles that you've played when you played the victim, uh, when you've made assumptions or when you've made judgments, you clearly have a perception that is a very broad spectrum of all the parts that you play. And you understand that there are many parts that you're playing, okay? Your I am, you know, is a moving target. So there's many, many versions of yourself and you have a clear understanding uh, understanding, intuition of that right here when this energy chakra is open, balanced, and flowing, okay? That has a lot to do. Um, the pineal gland has a lot to do with production of melanin. Um, this is how we can start getting into dreaming, vivid dreams. Um, this has... I mean, it's, it's an amazing, amazing energy will to be open and to be tapping in into the non-physical 
traits that you have and the gifts that you have, okay? Um, what else do I want to say? I think that's pretty much it. All right, let's go up to the seventh chakra, guys, the crown chakra. I'm going to go to this other photo really quickly so that I could show you where it is. And is the crown chakra. And as you can see, it actually sits right on the crown of your head. And I would say it's actually about two inches above your head. If you wore a crown, it would be where the top of the crown sat, okay? It's called the crown chakra. And this chakra, guys, is everything related to the cosmos. This connects you to the multiverse and to the universal prime creator. So the sixth, the, the sixth chakra here is your personal godship, your personal I am. But the seventh chakra, when this is open and flowing, you understand the oneness that you have with the prime creator. And also this is your connection to your higher self, your higher God self, and to uh, the cosmos, galaxies. You may get information or downloads, or you may have dreams of you, you living on another planet. You can connect to the cosmos, okay? So let me go over to the other picture really quickly so we can talk about that. All right right above the crown, okay? Spirituality, relationship to God, universal source, okay? This is when you are completely connected to universal, multiversal, uh, cosmic information, okay? And you're pulling that down from the higher self because not shown here or not shown on the other one, there is another actual chakra, eighth chakra that is above this, okay? And that's your higher self. And when you can connect to that eighth chakra, it actually, you pull down information from the cosmos and all that energy comes down and it flows down, all right? And as this is aligned and balanced, you get information that's flowing from the top, which is the prime creator, the cosmic energy, divine energy, all the way down to the earth and the earth can come all the way up to the cosmos and there is a, a flow of energy that's constantly flowing in and out in and out okay when all of this is aligned and open all right and it's good to understand this because i always tell people you can have a good understanding of where people are with their own self-mastery depending on their age so, you know, where a, a seven-year-old may be in only trying to understand safety and security compared to where maybe a 21-year-old, they're trying to establish their own personal power, you can kind of understand where they are according to their age and their developmental age. Now, I'm not saying that these that's specific like it only happens between zero and seven and if you miss that age you miss it i'm not saying that i'm saying that's an average and i'm saying that all of these energy centers you still have to do work to keep them open i will tell you guys that you could do 10 minute energy clearing chakra clearing you could do a 10 minute um chakra uh just work you could youtube it it's easy. Um, I do it often, especially we go out and we are giving and receiving energy every day. And sometimes if you're very sensitive to energy, if you're an empath, if you absorb people's energy, you will get energy that is not yours. And you have to learn to eliminate what's not yours and what belongs to you. And that's about personal power, okay, self-will. This is about eliminating what doesn't belong to you and keeping what does belong to you, all right, which is why there's digestion issues. Our digestive system is all about elimination, right? Processing, taking what we need, taking the nutrients, taking the vitamins, and eliminating 
the toxic or what we don't need. Our body gets rid of it. So that's why this energy chakra is so important. So if you are very sensitive to energy, I recommend you do energy healing. You do energy cleansing often, especially if you're starting to feel anxious, you're starting to feel depressed, you're starting to, you know, feel um, some energy that does not belong to you. You can't understand where it came from. Work in these energy systems, in these energy centers to rid yourself of physical issues, okay? If you're having digestion issues, see if there's something you can make a correlation within this third energy center, okay? Um, you know, like I said before, if you're having some fibroid issues, if you're having a lot of, you know, sexuality, STDs, you know, fertility issues, issues getting pregnant, procreation, any of that work within this second energy, okay, this second, this second energy system, this chakra, because when you can unblock this, you get energy, and energy, prana, we're all energy, we're balls of energy, and we need our energy to be working and flowing so that we could work up and work down, all right, and then this is perfect alignment, all right, guys, um, so I really wanted to talk about that. It's so important because there are a lot of physiological issues. There's a lot of diseases out here, but sometimes medication is only treating the symptoms. I'm not saying that you can't take medications. I think you have to balance it. Um, and I say that being a family nurse practitioner, treating patients medically, you know, with medication, I do it. But I also know there are ways that we can clear ourselves, we can clear our energy. And there's ways that we could heal ourselves. We just have to do the work. All right. So I wanted to get that information out. Do your research. You know, if you're having some issues with your throat, you know, a lot of sore throats, pharyngeal issues. Look into your throat chakra. Is there something you need? Are you having an issue with communication? Are you not communicating yourself authentically? Was there a point in your life where you wanted to say something and you felt like you were shut down? These are things that you really have to think about. And I promise you, you can really, really heal yourself. So that's all I have for this podcast um, you know, make sure you subscribe, like, and share, follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Um, if you have any questions, reach out to us until the next episode, guys, I wish you lots of love and light and take care.